Oh, hello! Meet Blob, a slime mold known as Fizarum polycephalum. Right now on your screens, Blob is growing in a wet dish at a place corresponding to Tokyo, with old flakes marking the locations of other major cities in the greater Tokyo area. Fizarum avoids bright light, so scientists from Hokkaido University used it to simulate mountains, lakes and other locations on the map. The mold soon filled the space with a dense web of plasmodium, eventually it cleaned out its networks to focus on branches that connect the food sources. Now let us overlay the mold painting with the actual Tokyo Rail system. Mind-blowing! Unfortunately, while the actual Tokyo Railway system was not optimized or constructed using more data, the experiment underlined the potential of biological systems to inform and inspire human projects to be more efficient. As humans, we love to optimize and save time. Reinventing the wheel isn't always the best approach. Throughout history, inventors like the best painters have followed a simple rule. When you see a good idea, borrow it. And who better to borrow from than nature itself? And we actually have a name for that. Biomimetics or biomimicry. It's the practice of designing systems, materials and technologies inspired by principles and processes observed in nature. And in the 21st century, we have an actual scale to rate the level of it. There are three levels. Form biomimicry, process biomimicry and system biomimicry. But let's not rush. Make yourselves comfortable and let's begin our journey into the world of biomimicry. The first level, form biomimicry, involves mimicking the shape, structure or morphology of a natural organism. Velcro. We use it everywhere. ISS is covered with it. Some even use Velcro to keep the tope in place. It's like the big brother of the duct tape. So this man, George de Mastral, noticed that his dog always returned from walks covered in burrs. Examining it under a microscope, he saw tiny hooks clinging to the fur. Inspired, he created nylon hooks to mimic this mechanism, resulting in reusable Velcro. So as you can see, the first level of biomimicry requires a keen observation. So now be the observer. Try it for yourself. A kingfisher bird, an owl and a penguin. What do you think they have in common? And what humanity made a lot better with that observation? You can write your thoughts in the comments. Done? So if you guess the bullet trains, you're either a genius or a Japanese scientist or both. Bullet trains in Japan faced issues with loud sonic booms exiting tunnels. Luckily, the lead designer was an avid bird watcher and he came up with an ingenious solution using nature. He solved this by mimicking the kingfisher beak, it even looks like one, all swings and penguins bellies, which allows them to dive into water with minimal splash, fly without making sound and just have a very slippery belly. This design reduced noise and improved the train's speed and efficiency. Now people who live near those tunnels do not have to mimic whales in their sleep habits. Because if you didn't know, whales never sleep 100%, they're always watching you. Just turning off half of their brain to rest, while the other half remains alert. But it's not what we learned from them. They're hard not to notice, the bumps on the front edge of its fin. They help the whale cut the water into several streams, like a comb. Applying this design to wind turbine blades reduced air resistance and noise. Overall, wind farms are inspired more by marine life than anything else. Traditionally, wind turbines have to be placed far apart as they can disrupt each other's wind flow and reduce the overall efficiency of the farm. Scientists, while examining schools of fish, observed that they swim very close to each other without disturbing the water around them. Another unexpected example is on the way. If you take a walk across London, you see a unique building known as the Gherkin, which looks like an alien spaceship among the city's regular structures, I'd say. The inspiration was a Venus flower basket, a sea sponge that filters water. The Gherkin mimics the Venus flower in detail, using glass arranged in a strong but flexible way. Its round shape deflects wind currents, and the design includes chimney-like shafts that allow the natural airflow and ventilation. 
This structure reduces the need for beams and columns, cutting down on material usage. Now picture yourself driving near this innovative building with a Mercedes-Benz Bionic that attracts more attention than the building itself. At this point, it shouldn't surprise you if I suddenly start to talk about a fish. But it's not just a fish, it's the boxfish that lives in a coral reefs and lagoons. And despite its boxy shape, it navigates with surprising agility. Researchers studying the boxfish discovered that its unique form allows it to move through water with minimal drag and maximum stability. This revelation caught the attention of engineers and designers to optimize vehicle shapes for better fuel efficiency and performance. So Mercedes-Benz designers made this. The Bionic was unveiled in 2005, and unfortunately, this car remains as a concept, but the experience from it is used in the company's new projects. It is not always easy to find where to look for answers. People spend hundreds of years looking at birds and trying to copy their flight, inventing different miracles that did not fly but crash. The dream of fighting gravity took many lives. One of them was Franz Reichelt. A visionary, as uh, we call him now, or a crazy man, as he was referred to then. He's standing on a stool that stands on the table that stands on the edge of Eiffel Tower. Behind his back, he has a wingsuit that a bit resembles the parachute used by extreme sports lovers nowadays. But his invention was a bit different. First he tested on dummies then jumped from the fourth floor and broke his leg. The conclusion was clear, height wasn't enough for his invention to work. So in 1912, he climbed the Eiffel Tower and shouted, see you soon. But gravity had other plans. Although his idea was noble, his math wasn't perfect. At this point, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, the Wright brothers already made the first sustained flight by looking at the right place. The mistake was that for ages people were copying the flight of birds that were swinging their wings. But look at the albatross. It can hang in the air for hours without a single movement. The thing is that birds can fly thanks to the shape of their wings. Air moves faster over the top of the wing and slower underneath. A faster airflow creates lower pressure, so the higher pressure under the wing lifts the bird. And just like with wind farms, here too, humanity solved the problem of air flows thanks to water, specifically the principle of hydrodynamics discovered by Daniel Bernoulli back in 18th century. If you look at the bird's wing, the bottom is flat and the top is curved. This shape helps the wing cut through the air, making the air move faster over the top and creating that pressure difference. So there's more pressure pushing up from the bottom. For planes, it's pretty similar. You just need to get the plane moving fast enough and the air will start lifting it. You can try it yourself. Curve your hand, hold it outside the window of a moving vehicle and feel the lift. Just make sure you're not the driver. On the first level of biomimicry, things can be spotted with the naked eye. But to go further, we often need tools like a microscope to uncover the potential. The second level is called process biomimicry. This level looks at methods and behaviors by which natural organisms achieve certain functions. Here we have to mimic how the organism interacts with its environment to build a structure that can also fit in without resistance. The Morpha butterfly, its saturated shimmering blue color, is arguably one of the most beautiful sights in the natural world. However, there is something deceptive about it. Unlike most animals and plants that derive their color from pigments like carotene for red, chlorophyll for green or melanin for dark hues, Morpha butterfly's blue doesn't come from pigments. Blue is rarity in the animal kingdom, and the Morpha butterfly achieves this not through chemistry, but through the microscopic structure of its wings. At the nanoscale, the wings of Morpha butterfly are covered with rows of tiny bristles that resemble a dense forest. These structures are so small that their size matches the wavelength of a visible light and are specifically designed to absorb all colors except blue. This makes the butterfly appear blue, even though it technically isn't. 
The structural coloration causes the color to change when viewed from different angles, and if you spill alcohol on it, the blue color disappears. The color will return once the wing dries. Congratulations, we found the first animal that light on its resume for the emoji position. But this optical trickery wouldn't fool someone with truly perfect vision. By perfect, I mean so advanced that you could see things invisible to the human eye, like the polarization of the light or even the early signs of cancer. That's the superpower of the mantis shrimp, a small but mighty marine creature with one of the most sophisticated visual systems known to science. Mantis shrimp eyes are a marvel of evolution, containing up to 16 types of photoreceptor cells compared to three found in humans. This allows them to perceive a vast spectrum of colors, including ultraviolet light. But their real party trick is their ability to detect polarized light, a type of light wave invisible to us. This ability helps mantis shrimp communicate, hunt, and navigate their vibrant underwater world with incredible precision. One groundbreaking application is, of course, in the field of medical diagnostics. Researchers are creating advanced cameras that can detect polarized light to identify cancer cells, which often have unique polarization signatures. But the applications don't stop there. The mantis shrimp vision is also being used to enhance underwater exploration. By detecting hidden objects, engineers are designing better navigation systems for submarines and underwater drones. Right about here, my brain starts to cook. But if I can get a headache just standing here, what should a woodpecker say? Does it even get a headache? Woodpeckers peck at wood 22 times per second. Imagine trying to slam your nose into a tree at that speed. Although I wouldn't recommend it. They do this around 12,000 times a day, subjecting their hands to forces up to 1200 G with each peck. For comparison, the highest G-force a human has survived was 214 G, experienced by a race car driver Kenny Brack. This brief millisecond-long event resulted in multiple fractures. It was a big list of, of broken things. I broke the sternum, shattered the back, uh, I broke my femur a couple of places, uh, crushed my ankles and uh, a couple of ribs. Uh, didn't find that out till two or three weeks later because that was kind of minor at the time, but uh, it was a big, big accident, that's for sure. Yet woodpeckers don't need physiotherapy at the end of the day. They have four adaptations that protect them from injury. A rigid but elastic beak, a porous skull, a small fluid-filled compartment that buffers the impacts, and a spring-like bone that supports the tongue, aiding in both packing and extracting insects. This combination results in the most protected brain ever. There should be a joke about the size, but I'll leave it to you. <laughs> Engineers have replicated each of these protective features to safeguard fragile electronics. The protective capsule they designed includes a hard outer shell made of steel, a soft layer of aluminium, rubber supports, and a layer of fiberglass. This structure can withstand forces of up to 60,000 G. Richard Hammond demonstrated a similar concept by placing a light bulb inside a protective capsule and dropping it from space. The bulb remained intact. When you unleash a superpower like this, it's hard to stop. You want more. Walking against gravity, maybe? Like geckos. Those tiny, agile lizards have long fascinated scientists and nature enthusiasts with their uncanny ability to scamper up walls and across ceilings with ease. Their secret doesn't lie in any sticky substance, but in millions of microscopic hairs on the pads of their feet. These are called setae. Each of these splits into even tinier structures known as spatula, which interacts with surface on molecular level. This interaction creates van der Waals force, a weak intermolecular force that, when multiplied by millions, allows it to stick to any surface. Gecko-inspired adhesives have revolutionized multiple fields, leading to innovations such as robots that can climb walls and ceilings with remarkable ease. In medicine, these have paved the way for secure, non-irritating bandages and surgical tapes, 
which reduce the risk of infection while enhancing the patient comfort. Furthermore, this technology is being adopted to create advanced surgical instruments that can gently yet firmly grip delicate tissues, minimizing the risk of damage during procedures. Finally, let's talk about the last and the biggest level of biomimicry, system biomimicry. This level involves emulating entire ecosystems and their interconnectedness to create sustainable and resilient designs. It requires a shift in perspective to think large-scale, considering the interconnectedness and sustainability of entire ecosystems. This approach looks beyond individual organisms to understand how entire biological systems function. One of the most ambitious applications of this concept is the Sahara Forest Project. It aims to turn one of the deadliest and most inhospitable places on Earth, the Sahara Desert, into a flourishing oasis. They draw inspiration from the unique adaptations of desert beetles and camels, creatures that have perfected the art of surviving in these conditions. Certain beetles in Namib Desert have developed an ingenious method to harvest water from the air. These beetles have bumpy shells with hydrophilic, water-attracting, and hydrophobic, water-repelling properties. During the cool, foggy mornings, moisture from the air condenses on their shells and forms droplets that roll down into their mouths, just like the Muad'Dib mouse from Dune. In every corner of the natural world, solutions are waiting to be discovered. Biomimicry teaches us that rather than reinventing the wheel, we should look to nature's genius, which has evolved over ages. By studying and emulating the strategies found in the natural world, we can create more sustainable, efficient and innovative solutions to the challenges we face. Nature is not just a source of inspiration, it's offering blueprints for the future of human ingenuity. So next time you find yourself admiring a spider's web or aerodynamics of a bird, remember that nature is speaking to you and all you need to do is listen and learn. Thank you for your time. See you in the next video.